You're listening to Audiology. Support our work on Patreon and be sure to submit your requests for topics in the comments below. Introduction Wealthy business magnates from the regions that were once part of the Soviet Union, especially in Russia and Ukraine, became enormously rich in the 1990s by acquiring state assets during the privatization that came after the USSR fell apart. The struggle to determine who would take over these state properties created opportunities for unofficial agreements with former Soviet officials, leading to the rapid wealth accumulation. These affluent individuals, known as Russian oligarchs, began their rise to prominence during Mikhail Gorbachev's tenure when he introduced reforms that opened up the market. Boris Berezovsky, who was originally a mathematician and researcher, emerged as one of the earliest examples of a Russian oligarch. During the presidency of Boris Yeltsin, from 1991 to 1999, these oligarchs gained substantial political influence. They were pivotal in funding Yeltsin's 1996 re-election campaign. Influential figures such as Roman Abramovich, Mikhail Khodorkovsky, Boris Berezovsky, and Vladimir Patanin secured significant assets at very low prices in the auctions organized as part of the Loans for Shares program just before the elections. Supporters of these out-of-favor oligarchs argue that the businesses they bought were undervalued at the time because they operated under outdated Soviet management models, lacking proper stock controls, bloated staff numbers, no real financial disclosure, and little concern for profits. From 2014 onward, the U.S. imposed sanctions on hundreds of Russian oligarchs and their businesses as punishment for supporting what it deemed harmful activities by the Russian government worldwide. In 2022, following Russia's military intervention in Ukraine, countries across the globe imposed targeted sanctions on many Russian oligarchs and their immediate family members as a diplomatic condemnation of Russia's actions. Yeltsin era, 1991-1999. During the time when Mikhail Gorbachev introduced reforms known as perestroika between approximately 1985 and 1991, enterprising individuals in Russia began to import sought-after goods like personal computers and jeans, selling them at large profits. After Boris Yeltsin took office as the president of Russia in July 1991, a group of businessmen known as oligarchs rose to prominence. These individuals, often starting with minimal assets, amassed substantial wealth by exploiting their ties to the corrupt, though democratically elected, government during Russia's shift to a market economy. The voucher privatization program of 1992 to 1994 allowed a select group of these new businessmen to turn into billionaires by taking advantage of the significant discrepancy between the low domestic prices and the much higher global market prices of Russian resources like natural gas and oil. These oligarchs quickly fell out of favor with the general public and were frequently criticized for contributing to the chaos that ensued following the disintegration of the Soviet Union in 1991. Economists Sergei Guryev and Andrei Rachinsky note a distinction between the older generation of oligarchs who had connections with the Soviet establishment and the new entrepreneurs such as Kaka Benduki, who built fortunes from the ground up during the turbulent economic landscape caused by Gorbachev's reforms. Most of the oligarchs advanced due to their affiliations with Soviet authorities and their access to Communist Party resources. Figures like Boris Berezovsky, who once headed a department at an Academy of Sciences research center and later established his own company through a joint venture with the Institute. Mikhail Khodorkovsky got his start by importing computers through a Komsomol-endorsed organization in 1986, had a stint in Komsomol leadership in Moscow, and subsequently ventured into banking with the help of former Komsomol members in the Moscow city government. He even held government advisory positions while still managing his businesses. Vladimir Vinogradov worked his way up from a Komsomol secretary at a nuclear machinery plant to chief economist at a major Soviet bank. Economist Yegor Gaidar was part of a research team in the Soviet Academy of Sciences that mirrored RAND, and became an economics editor for a theoretical Communist Party journal before occupying critical roles in the Russian government, including prime minister, during 1991-1992.
Gaidar, along with Anatoly Chubais, played key roles in the initial stages of Russian privatization. Commentator David Satter highlighted that the driving force behind these reforms was not the establishment of a system grounded in universal principles, but instead the creation of private ownership, which in the absence of a strong legal framework, led to rampant materialistic and power-hungry pursuits. The 1998 Russian financial crisis severely affected the oligarchs, particularly those with banking interests who saw their fortunes dwindle. Key oligarchs from the Yeltsin era, such as Roman Abramovich, Boris Berezovsky, Vladimir Gusinsky, Mikhail Khodorkovsky, Vladimir Potnin, Alexander Smolensky, and Vladimir Vinogradov, were known for their significant influence over Yeltsin and his circle. Sometimes referred to as the semi-banker Sheena, or seven-banker outfit, these individuals controlled a large portion of Russia's finances from 1996 to 2000. Historian Edward L. Keenan likened these oligarchs to the medieval Muscovite boyars due to their substantial clout. A 2008 report from The Guardian noted that the Kremlin under later leadership had purged many oligarchs from the Yeltsin era. Putin era 1999-2022 prior to the invasion of Ukraine Upon Vladimir Putin's rise to power in the Kremlin, the previously influential oligarchs from Boris Yeltsin's era began to lose their clout. Some, like Mikhail Khodorkovsky and Mikhail Miralashvili, faced imprisonment, while others chose to leave Russia, disposed of their businesses, or met with unexpected deaths, including figures such as Vladimir Vinogradov and Boris Berezovsky. Initially targeted for supposed tax evasion, some of Yeltsin's former oligarchs fled the country to evade legal issues, notably Vladimir Gusinsky and Boris Berezovsky. Mikhail Khodorkovsky, a notably wealthy individual from the Yukos Oil Company, was captured in October 2003, receiving a prison sentence that ultimately stretched to 14 years before Putin pardoned him, leading to his release on December 20, 2013. In the 2000s, a new guard of oligarchs rose to prominence, many of whom had personal connections to President Putin from earlier times in St. Petersburg's local government or from KGB service in Dresden. These include Vladimir Litvinenko, the head of the institute where Putin earned his degree, and his childhood judo companion, Arkady Rotenberg, along with Gennady Timchenko, a longtime friend of Putin who benefited from an oil export license issued by Putin in 1991. Unlike their predecessors, these new business magnates operated in sync with the government, reaping benefits from state-funded banks and public contracts, moving the country from an era of crony capitalism to one characterized by state capitalism. An economic analysis in 2003 recognized 21 such oligarchic groupings. Between 2000 and 2004, Putin seemed to engage in a delicate balancing act with these oligarchs ultimately reaching an agreement that allowed them to keep their power on the condition that they backed and aligned themselves with Putin's administration. However, some commentators believe that the oligarchic framework persisted under Putin as he spent significant effort mediating disputes among rival oligarch factions. The top 10 oligarchs during the early years of Putin's tenure included names like Roman Abramovich, Oleg Deripaska, and Mikhail Prokhorov. Five years after Putin took office, Forbes identified 36 Russian billionaires, acknowledging that these individuals amassed their fortunes privately without holding government positions. By 2005, after legal confrontations mainly involving Yukos oil, the number of billionaires fell to 30, notably with Khodorkovsky's fortunes plummeting. A 2013 Credit Suisse report determined that the wealthiest 110 people in Russia controlled 35% of the nation's wealth. Daniel Treisman proposed the term Silovark to describe a new class of oligarchs with security and military backgrounds. Billionaire Alexander Lebedev, a former KGB agent himself, criticized this group for their materialistic lifestyles and lack of cultural engagement. The U.S. Treasury listed numerous Russian oligarchs in 2018, defining anyone with over $1 billion in wealth as an oligarch a classification met with criticism for its lack of discrimination and inclusion of Putin's detractors. 
Looking at the 2008 financial crisis, Bloomberg LP reported that Russia's most affluent lost a collective $230 billion since July of that year due to a sharp decline in the stock market, prompted by the Russo-Georgian War and resulting investor apprehension. The credit crunch hit Russian billionaires particularly hard as they had leveraged sizable loans from domestic and Western banks against stock holdings. The downturn impacted Oleg Deripaska, who was Russia's wealthiest man before the crisis, causing him to liquidate assets to meet lenders' demands as share prices tumbled. Putin era, 2022 invasion of Ukraine and Western sanctions. Following the 2022 Russian military action in Ukraine, key Western nations such as Canada, the United States, and the nations of Europe, along with Japan, took extraordinary steps to impose economic sanctions on Russian President Vladimir Putin and his wealthy associates. These individuals have sought to conceal their riches to avoid these assets being frozen by Western authorities. These economic measures are designed to directly affect the upper echelons of Russian society, holding them accountable for their support and compliance with the conflict in Ukraine. The effectiveness of these sanctions on the conflict remains uncertain due to Putin's influence over the wealthy individuals targeted. In an effort to evade detection and seizure, nine luxury yachts owned by Russian elites have disabled their tracking systems and have navigated toward ports known for less stringent inspections. On March 2, 2022, the United States formed Task Force Klepto Capture, an interagency group that includes members from the FBI, U.S. Marshal Service, IRS, Postal Inspection Service, Homeland Security Investigations, and the Secret Service. The primary aim of this task force is to enforce the sanctions by locating, freezing, and seizing assets that are believed to have been acquired through illegal activities related to the Russian government and the conflict in Ukraine. The Organized Crime and Corruption Reporting Project launched the Russian Asset Tracker on March 21, 2022. This platform highlights the profiles and holdings of numerous Russian oligarchs. The relatives of high-profile politicians, including President Putin's younger daughter, Katerina Tikhonova, have been beneficiaries of lucrative contracts from state-run companies. Katerina's ex-husband, Kirill Shamalov, operates the largest petrochemical corporation in Russia, Sibor, and has his own investment fund. The foreign minister's son-in-law manages a fund exceeding $6 billion, while Andrei Ryumin, related to Putin's one-time Ukrainian ally, oversees substantial agricultural assets benefiting from government subsidies. Others, like the offspring of former Prime Minister Fradkov, former head of the presidential administration Ivanov and head of the Security Council Patrushev, have also ascended to oligarch status. A list of notable oligarchs and business leaders who have risen to power in Russia and have faced sanctions includes Petr Fradkov, leading figure at Promsvia's bank, with familial ties to a former Russian prime minister and the intelligence community. Andrei Guryev, previously at the helm of a major fertilizer producer. Mikhail Gutseryev, once owner of a leading Russian oil business, and his son, Said Gutseryev, a notably wealthy individual recognized by Forbes. Katerina Tikhonova, who has influential roles linked to her father, President Putin. Kirill Shamalov, a significant figure in the petrochemical industry. Andrei Valerievich Ryumin, with leadership roles in a major energy company and connections to a Ukrainian politician. Andrei Patrushev and Sergei Sergeyevich Ivanov, both positioned in powerful roles, are tied to Putin's inner circle and prominent in Russian national security and finance, respectively. Yevgeny Prigozhin, who established a private military organization that took control of a key city in a revolt against the Russian military in 2023. Yuri Slyusar, involved with Russia's aviation industry. Alexander Vinokurov, an investor with significant retail interests who is linked to Russian foreign affairs through marriage. These individuals' assets and activities have come under increased scrutiny due to their association with the Russian government during a period of intense geopolitical conflict. Russian oligarchs in London The UK government has been keen to attract foreign investment, including through visa programs created in the 1994 under the leadership of John Major. Notably, since 2008, 
Russians have made up a significant portion of these visa recipients, roughly 20%. London has gained nicknames such as London Grad and Moscow on Thames due to the influx of wealthy Russians and Russian investment in the city. Numerous Russian billionaires have chosen to purchase luxury properties in London's most exclusive neighborhoods. Individuals such as Eugene Schwidler, Alexander Naster, Konstantin Kagalovsky, David Wolkowski, and Abram Reznikov have made London their permanent home. For instance, Roman Abramovich acquired a vast 15-bedroom estate at 16 Kensington Palace Gardens for £120 million, and Mikhail Fridman took on the restoration of Athlone House in London, declaring it his main residence in 2016. In the sports arena, Roman Abramovich made headlines by purchasing Chelsea Football Club in 2003 and invested heavily in the team, boosting player salaries to new highs. The literary scene also saw Russian investment when Alexander Mamut spent £53 million to buy the Waterstones bookstore chain and then pumped in an additional £100 million, securing its survival. Under Mamut's ownership, Waterstones turned its first profit in years by 2016. However, Waterstones managing director James Daunt expressed in 2022 that ongoing Russian ownership amid the political climate would have been detrimental to the business.